utilizing a constrained resource. Constrained resources are bottlenecks in a company. They prevent the company from meeting demand for their products, therefore they must be utilized correctly to maximize profits. Let's look at an example. The company cannot fully satisfy demand because there is a bottleneck or a constrained resource. The course of action to maximize profits is directly related to which products produce the highest contribution margin in relationship to the constrained resource, as opposed to the product with the highest contribution margin. The calculation is performed on a per unit basis, so make certain that you calculate it on a per unit basis in relationship to the constrained resource. So let's look at two examples. Machine minutes are the constraining resource. So we have these products X, Y, and Z. We have their sales and we have their variable expenses and therefore we have their contribution margin. Now we need to know how many minutes are needed on the machine. There is obviously not enough machine minutes to satisfy demand for all of their products so they have to look and see which one of these products X, Y, or Z is going to give them the biggest bang for the buck when trying to go through this constrained resource or bottleneck. The contribution margin per minute is obtained by taking the contribution margin dividing by the minutes needed per unit. So the number of units that's going to be produced and for each unit we need six minutes on the machine. So the contribution margin per minute would be nine dollars for this uh, for X. Now for Y the contribution margin is eighteen dollars the machine minutes is needed is 10 minutes, therefore the contribution margin per minute is $2. And looking at the contribution margin for Z, 24, machine minutes, 5, the contribution margin per minute is going to be 5. Therefore, we want to look and put first in line of the products that we're going to be making since we have this constrained resource. The first product that we're going to queue up to make is going to be product X. After that, $9 per contribution per minute. After that, the next highest one is Z, $5 per minute. So therefore, the next thing we would want to produce would be Z. And then after that, whatever minutes are remaining, we would want to produce X. Now let's look and see if something different, using a different example, if the constrained resource is number of material pounds. So the constraining resources is the fact that they can only order or obtain so many pounds per month. So now we have the same sales, variable expenses, and contribution margin for these same products, but now we have a different dynamic or a different constraining resource. So we're going to take the contribution margin divided by the number of pounds that we need of this material, and the material is needed both for X, Y, and Z, so the material is common to all three products. So we're going to take the contribution margin divided by the material pounds needed, and the contribution margin per pound based on this constraining resource is going to be $5 for X, $6 for Y, and $2 for Z. Therefore, the one with the highest contribution margin in relationship to the constraining resource would be Y. So that would be the first product that they would make. After that, they would use the next highest contribution margin per pound, which would be $5, and that would be product X. And so that would be the second one that they would produce, and the third one being product Z.